this week is um, world demography and migration so this is just a uh, basic discussion on what is demography and uh, what is migration so the uh, our objectives for this week is to identify the different international issues and trends in global population so that will include migration uh, synthesize the concept of globalization in relation to demography and population and analyze the political economy political economic cultural and social factors underlying the global movements of people okay so again this is just going to be a basic discussion and for more in-depth discussion uh, that will be done on uh, our zoom call so let's go ahead and um, analyze uh, discuss what is demography so demography is actually the scientific study of human population in which includes the study of changes in population size uh, composition and its distribution so uh, kung unsa kadaghan ang population unsay nagcompose sa population mga babae or lalaki um matigwang bata and its distribution asa naka distribute okay asa ang daghan ng population ug asa ang gamay ra nga population so money demography the meaning tag demography so it's all about the number of people no asa sila naka distribute unsay mga ages no unsa nga age ang uh, ang kita 10% of the population is uh um, 50 to 60 years old, etc. So, money demography. And then, uh, what is the, the importance of demographic data? Why, why do we have to get uh, the data? Why do we have to know pila kabok ang babae? Why do we have to know pila kabok ang lalaki? Why do we have to know pila ang mga senior citizens, pila ang mga babies, pila ang mga newborn, pila ang mga toddlers? bilang mga nasa grade 1 or elementary level, high school level. So, we have what's the importance why we have to know um, the demographic data? Why do our local government conduct uh, census? No, last last week we have a census uh, household per household. So, the, the importance is because of um, their governance. So, the, the demographic data will be used on the health planning, uh, planning for food supply, housing plan, employment planning, educational planning, migration planning, and all other. So these are the major major reasons why we need the demogra demographic data. So for health planning, for example, um, we have to we have to know uh, who are. Uh, let's say, for example, in this pandemic, so we have to know who are most likely to be affected with COVID-19. Uh, so, who are the vulnerable people? So, that's very important, right? We also need to uh, know how many hospitals we are going to build to accommodate the number of people that we have uh, in a city or in a uh, municipality. We also have to know the number of people in order for us to know how many doctors, how many nurses that we are going to hire, uh, how many personnel that we are going to hire to man the hospitals. So that's the health planning. How many, um, how many family planning kits that we are going to produce to, to get in order to distribute to our um, community, to our population. Uh, how many um, vitamins, vaccines? So that's very important, no? Because if you don't know the number of population, uh, you will not be able to have a, a concrete plan. So di ka balupila ka bukod ng paliton ng tambal, okay? So planning for food supply. This is also very important so that you will know uh, how what to prioritize. Okay, uh, you ha you know how the your population, uh, especially when it comes to uh, mga disaster, typhoons, let's say for example. So you already have that data available so that you will know pila ka food box imong i prepare, pila ka sakong bugas, etc. Let's say for example another. Uh, Again, example is the COVID. 
So, you have an available data already, dapat, so that you know, pila kasakong bugas yung mga distribute. Right? Housing plan. Okay, so, uh, pag, pag naaka sa government, you have to, there's what we call um, housing unit planning. Right? So, hibalo ka dapat, o, oh, unsa ka dako nga lugar, unsa ka dako nga uh, lot, ang imong prepare for um, residential area. No? So, you'll know, para dili magsiksi ka ng mga tao, you have to know your data. Employment planning po, you have to know because para maka-open ka, maka makatabang ka, pag-open ang mga opportunities for your, for your population, for your citizens. Educational planning, so you know how how many classrooms to build, how many teachers to hire, how many books to buy. That's very important. Migration planning, so you will know um, how many people are coming in and out of your country. So uh, you will be able to uh, kung baga ma makuha niyo basig na hurot na dahil mong tao nag-migrate na tanan nag OFW na tanan so wala na yung magman, wala na yung mo padagan sa industriya so demographic data is very important right so what is migration? so migration is um, moving of people moving of people from one place to another so there are so many reasons why people move right um, pe people move to, to look for greener pasture for prosperity, right? For opportunities, um, be, that's what we call global migration and labor markets. People also move because of their loved ones, not only to ilang loved ones. People also move for preferences or health issues. So the kind of reasons why people move. Um, Global migration is uh, a situation in which people go to live in foreign countries, especially in order to find work. So that, that's actually, I think, the major reason why people move. Most migration is from developing countries to the developed countries. Yes, that's very ideal. Uh, from the developing, like the Philippines, they are moving to the developed countries because they are looking for greener pasture, opportunities. Right? So, people who move from one place to another in search of work or shelter are called migrants. So, may tawag sa ilaha. If you move to another, you are a migrant. Um, there are types of migration. Internal migration, external migration, immigration, and immigration. Immigration, immigration. So, internal migration meaning uh, there's a migration within, within your uh, area of responsibility. So let's say, for example, you're from Kabadbaran, you move to Butuan. So that's an internal migration. That's still a migration because migration is moving from one place to another. Dili lang siya pang outside of the country. That's an internal migration. External migration is that you are already moving outside of the area of responsibility, outside of your country. All right. Immigration. Immigration is actually. The, the number three and four, immigration and immigration, um, they, they are actually the same. It, they just differ in the perspective. Okay, so when we say immigration, meaning the person, uh, immigrant or immigration, mo na itawag na to sa kita nga Pinoy, uh, ang Pinoy ni move sa state, so gitawag na to siyang immigration. Ang immigration is the tawag sa mga immigrants ay ang gigamit na to if the person uh, from the perspective of the receiving country. So, immigration is the perspective from the origin country. Immigration is the perspective from the receiving country. So, actually the same sila. Dep depending lang sa uh, perspective. Then, <clears throat> categories of migrants. So, there are three categories of migrants uh, or actually six. 
So there are six. One is temporary labor migrants, meaning nag-move lang sila for work, nasla kontrata, and they just go back. So mo ni mga OFWs. Uh, irregular migrants, mo ni silang mga walay papers, no? Um, illegal. Illegal ay lang pag-move. Refugees, these are people who are forced to move. Okay, mga refugees in Thai. Um, the area, their place is torn by war. So, kinahalan na mo, mo balhin. Or na hit by calamity. Storm. Earthquake. Dili na sila kapuyo. Dili na sila pwede mabuhi diha. So, they have to move as refugees. And uh, number four is asylum seekers. Sabi ni asylum seekers, this usually applies to political people, no? political issues. Um, the pinaka example in is Jose Maria Season. Jose Maria Season is the, uh, what do you call him, founder of the uh, NDF, National Democratic Front, uh, which is a political organization. Um, and uh, nga nung asylum seeker man siya because si Jose Maria Season if he is going to go back to the Philippines he is going to be either jailed preso siya or killed shoot to kill siya right so um, nag seek siya asylum and Netherlands accepted the asylum so meaning uh, he is allowed to stay in Netherlands he is not a citizen but he is an asylum Right? Na siya political asylum. He adopt siya sa Netherlands to, to ensure his safety. Para mabuhi niya po siya. Forced migration. So, the same ni siya sa mga refugees. Na nasunog ang inyong area or kanang area gidevelop as an industrial park. No? So, you are forced to move out. Return migrants. So, money silang mga dito na nagdako and then ni balik Alright? Ito gipanganak sa states, uh, nibalik sa Pilipinas, or gipanganak sa Pilipinas, nibalik sa states. Muna sila yung mga return migrants. Alright? So, there are positive and negative impact of, impact of uh, migration. So, the positive is that uh, there's a decrease in unemployment. So, pag nag-migrate, positive na siya on, on our end. Let's say, for, for the Philippines, so, it's a positive because mabawasan, ni move be to siya to seek for job. So, mabawasan ng unemployed people sa Pilipinas. Improve quality of life. So, since migration is actually done from the developing countries to the developed countries, and they're also able to get jobs, uh, better paying jobs, so there's an improved quality of life. Third is improve social life and exchange of cultures. So, uh, yeah, that's understandable. Exchange of cultures. Greater economic growth. Better opportunities at education. Uh, decrease in population density and birth rate. Right? So, sa ato na siya, sa ginigigikanan niya. Right? So, kung ang ang tao is a citizen of the US and move out so positives ay lahana but uh, it is negative dito sa receiving end no mahimo siyang negative nga naman uh, because there will be an additional worker nga ma-add sa ilaha mo nang uban bitaw sa single like Singapore na yung mga tao nga we have to prioritize Singaporean adi ta mo dawat ang mga Pinoy na because the, there's a negative impact sa ilaha uh, due to migration because marag mas daghan na ilang kakompetensya sa work increase job competition na second impact on environment environment due to crowded cities so mas daghan ang tao and there will be also exploitation because we say exploitation uh, example ana is that kitang Pinoy ni ato sa Saudi nag DH uh, prone ta, exposed ta sa exploitation. Ay, diba? Daghan na balita. Garip, nibugbog, nikulata sa iyang amo, etc. So, that's an exploitation. But there's also a positive impact, actually, for the receiving country. Because, let's say, for example, 
uh, there are jobs that they do not want to do. Di ba na magiging may ana? Kaya mga jobs bitaw nga mga dirty, mga kapoy, di ba na nila gusto trabaho on. So, that's actually uh, a positive for them because they will now have people to do the job for them. Right? They will have additional skilled people nga mo trabaho so that their economy will move forward. Let's say for the, the best example will be uh, like in Saudi or Middle East countries. They see it as a positive because Filipino people are skilled, no, highly skilled actually, that uh, they are able to fill in kadaghan man ang job niya gamay ra ang tao nga mutrabaho so it's it's positive so there is always two uh, sides of the story on uh, immigration positive and negative de depending on the situation and depending also on the perspective right so um, that's it that's for migration and demography for questions you know where to post it have a nice day